Hello and welcome to a summary of all you need to know about Emma Levine's text, A Game of Polo with a Headless Goat. Now I'm going to read through and explain this text in depth and the version that I will read is what appears in the Pearson Edexcel International GCSE Anthology, which is an extract taken from her novel, which is which goes by the same name. Now, as I read through the extract, I'll explain the meaning related to this text, language devices that you need to be aware of, as well as other helpful information that you need to understand if you're writing about this text for your coursework or for exams. So let's begin. Now, do you remember that this text is taken from a novel with the same name and it's based on Levine's travels throughout Asia where she was researching and filming unusual sports. So in this passage, she writes about a donkey race in Karachi, which is in Pakistan. So what I'll do is I'll read through different sections of the text and then pause every so often to talk through the language techniques. So let's begin. We drove off to find the best viewing spot, which turned out to be the crest of the hill, so we could see the approaching race. I asked the lads if we could join in the wacky races and follow the donkeys, and they loved the idea. We'll open the car boot, you climb inside and point your camera towards the race as the donkeys overtake us, we'll join the cars. But will you try and get to the front? Oh yes, that's no problem. The two lads who'd never been interested in this Karachi sport were suddenly fired up with enthusiasm. We waited for eternity on the brow of the hill, me perched on the boot with a zoom lens pointing out. Nearly one hour later, I was beginning to feel rather silly when the only action was a villager on wobbly bicycle who nearly fell off as he cycled past and gazed around at us. Several vehicles went past and some donkey carts carrying spectators. Are they coming? We called out to them. Coming, coming, came the reply. I was beginning to lose faith in this happening, but the lads remained confident. Just as I was assuming that the race had been cancelled, we spotted two approaching donkey carts in front of a cloud of fumes and dust created by some 50 vehicles roaring up in their wake. As they drew nearer, Yakub revved up the engine and began to inch the way of the car out of the lay-by. The two donkeys were almost dwarfed by their entourage, but there was no denying their speed. The Kibler donkey is said to achieve speeds of up to 40 kilometers per hour, and this looked close. The two were neck and neck, the jockeys perched on top of the tiny carts, using the wisps energetically, although not cruelly. Now, this opening is really interesting, and there's a lot of humor. And of course, this basically describes her viewing and of course waiting initially for a donkey race to occur. So she begins by repeating the first pl personal plural pronoun, we, and the repetition of this pronoun makes it almost seem like a group adventure between her and the two men that are accompanying her. Furthermore, she then uses a superlative best to really set up the scene for us. As we're reading from the outset, we expect that something's going to happen immediately, that even in the best viewing spot, so they're going to capture it. So we're really excited. This, of course, reflects the excitement that the author, Emma Levine, feels herself. Furthermore, she speaks using a very conversational register. She uses colloquial language like lads. And do remember colloquial language is an informal language. What this does is it adds a very disarming tone to the text and it makes it really, really relatable. Furthermore, she mentions wacky races. Now, of course, in our minds, we sometimes attribute races to cars, especially sports cars. And this reference is a play on words referring to an old and very popular cartoon where there were lots of different characters racing on cars, but also on jets. However, we wouldn't really associate this type of race with donkeys. Furthermore, uh, she's told that she's going to enter the car boot. So this is an interesting common noun. Again, we start wondering, what is this wacky race? And we realize that this race is between donkeys, animals that we would not expect. So of course, this already makes us realize that culturally, this is a very different experience. And of course, this is also really intriguing. It totally goes against what we would anticipate. Also, she's told to climb inside the car boot and point her camera towards the race. And this imperative sentence makes us realize that this race is going to be a curious one. Again, this builds up the tension. It builds up the anticipation. We're really interested and quite intrigued, especially if we're not very familiar with these types of racing. 
Again, there's a repetition of the two lads. This is repeated, as I mentioned before, it adds a colloquial tone. It makes, it, it kind of adds a playful and fun element to this text. Then the pre-modifier Karachi to describe this sport not only tells us about the region that she's in, which of course is Pakistan, but we then also anticipate that this sport is going to have a very different angle and a different element to it. Also, she mentions how they were suddenly fired up and they waited for an eternity. And both these hyperbolic language shows the impatience and the excitement that she feels, but also, of course, everybody that's spectating feels to witness this race. She then mentions, we waited for eternity on the brow of the hill, me perched in the boot with a zoom lens pointing out. Now this complex sentence is fairly slow and it builds up our interest, our anticipation. Not only is she in the best viewing spot, now she's perched perfectly ready with her camera to witness this chase. And so we're really, really rearing to see what's gonna happen next. However, we're let down when we realize that all she sees for now is a villager on a wobbly bicycle and the indefinite article A coupled with the adjective wobbly to describe the villager's bicycle really adds humor. It's such a letdown initially after we're so pumped up to see what's going to happen. This is of course the opposite of a race. The villager also gazes at them. He's bemused. And of course, this verb is quite humorous. It shows that actually these also these people are very misplaced. Maybe the author at this stage feels very self-conscious. She feels a little bit silly. Then she's told that they will be, still be coming. So she asks, they call out to different people. And the repetition of this word, and of course, these clipped sentences show that they are very impatient. And of course, it's because they know how this goes. She's not very aware of how these races pan out, but they are just basically telling her to just be patient. This race is going to occur. Then there's this contrast between Levine's own feelings. So she says, I was beginning to lose faith. However, this is in contrast to how the lads remained confident. And of course, this contrast between her pessimism and the optimism shows, of course, she's seeing this through a Western lens. She's not necessarily used to seeing these types of races. And so she's really pessimistic. It hasn't started on time. Therefore, it's not going to happen. However, this is the contrast to the people who, of course, native to that region, they know how this goes. And she just needs to be a bit more patient. Then again, they spot suddenly there's a change, of course, here, and they spot these donkey carts approaching. And again, just as I mentioned before, the mention of these donkeys who are racing, this shows that there's a huge cultural gap between what we expect of a race. In our minds, we would think a race maybe involves cars or some kind of mechanized technology. However, donkey carts is far more rudimentary. And of course, this is interesting. It's very different. Furthermore, these donkeys are in front of a cloud of fumes and dust and now there's a lot of sudden action this vivid imagery shows just how frenzied the activity is and then she tells us that there's some 50 vehicles roaring and the onomatopoeia roaring now creates this sudden sense of excitement of course this is a contrast to the villager who's on his wobbly bicycle Furthermore, we're told that Yakub, who's the driver, he revs his engine. And of course, this dramatic verb now shows that everything's picking up. And Levine, who's in the boot, of course, not necess necessarily the safest position. She's now going to be filming this as Yakub drives and she's going to be capturing this inside the boot of the vehicle. Again, there's a mention of the two donkeys. And here, as you can see from the beginning of the passages, constant reference back to the donkeys. This is anaphora. So we really, it really makes us realize that this is gonna be a very different type of race. And it's a race between two donkeys. And then we learn more specifically that they're called the Kibla donkey. They're a type of donkey species. And she uses here statistics to tell us that actually this donkey is, is really speedy. It runs up to 40 kilometers per hour. Of course, this goes against what we would assume of donkeys, which sometimes seem to be very passive we call them beasts of burden but actually here it's the opposite they're very very quick very sporty and they're used for races she also uses the idiom neck and neck to now show just how exciting this race is we're not sure who the clear winner is we're now witnessing these donkeys as they approach and then speed past her so let's carry on with the rest of the passage the noise of the approaching vehicles grew horns tooting, bells ringing, and the special rattles used just for this purpose, like maracas, a metal container filled with dried beans. 
Men standing on top of the cars and vans, hanging out of the taxis and perched on lorries, all cheered and shouted while the vehicles jostled to get to the front of the convoy. Yakub chose exactly the right moment to edge out of the road and swerve in front of the nearest car, finding the perfect place to see the two donkeys and at the front of the vehicles. This was Formula One without the rules, or a city centre rush hour gone anarchic, a complete flouting of every type of traffic rule and common sense. Our young driver relished this unusual test of his driving skills. It was a survival of the fittest and depended upon the ability to cut in front of a vehicle with a sharp flick of the steering wheel, no lane discipline hair, quick reflexes to spot a gap in the traffic for a couple of seconds, nervous of steel, and an effective horn. There were two races, the most rare spectators at the back, in front the two donkeys still running close and amazingly not put off by the uproar behind them. Ahead of the donkeys, oncoming traffic, for it was a main road, had to dive into the ditch and wait there until we'd passed. Yakub loved it. We stared near to the front, his hand permanently on the horn and his language growing more colourful with every vehicle that tried to cut in front. The road straightened and levelled and everyone picked up speed as we neared the end of the race. But just as they were reaching the finishing line, the hospital gate... There was a near pile-up as the leading donkey swerved, lost his footing, and he and the cart tumbled over. The race was over. Now here, there's a lot of onomatopoeia. So when we learn that the horns are, horns are tooting, bells are ringing, this onomatopoeia tooting and ringing really creates excitement. There's now suddenly this frenzied activity. And then the simile, uh, like maracas, again, this is really relatable and now creates a really vivid image in our minds. And of course, the n narrator, Emma Levine, is proven wrong. Of course, she was very, very impatient initially, and then she was told to be patient. Now the race has suddenly started. Also, there is a semantic field of vehicles here. So cars, vans, taxis, lorries. And ironically, they're not the ones that are racing. They're just following and keeping up with the donkeys to see which donkey is going to win. Now, we find that there's such a crush of activity and the vehicles are personified to show just how intensely competitive this race is. People are really jostling for space in their cars, but of course, also, of course, there's an element of danger because it's really dangerous for so many cars to be so crowded together as if chasing and, you know, running after these donkeys to see which donkey wins. On top of that, we learn that Yakub, so now the person that's driving the car that the narrator is in, he edges out and swerves. And there's this contrast in the slow verb edge out versus a rapid verb swerve. So again, there's this contrast in activity. Suddenly he goes from being very stationary to suddenly swerving out. Again, he wants to make sure that Levine sees all of the action. Furthermore, we're told that this was Formula One without the rules, and this metaphor shows just how dangerous the race is, but equally, of course, how exciting it is. And when she likens this to city centre rush hour gone anarchic, the alliteration city centre and hyperbole anarchic shows just how crazy the activity was once this race started. Uh, Levine also uses Darwinian language. It was the survival of the fittest, showing just how adrenaline filled this event was. Moreover, there's a mention of how this really depended on the ability of drivers to cut in front of one vehicle over another, showing really how dangerous the driving was. And actually, the driving was far more dangerous than, of course, the donkeys themselves. And the parenthesis, and parenthesis is just a fancy way of saying brackets, here the parenthesis adds humour, so it's Levine's own internal monologue, and it uh, refers to the UK driving rules. So of course, when you're driving in the UK, you have to have lane discipline. You can even get a ticket if you're not in the correct lane. But of course, this is humorous because this is the complete opposite. There's no lane discipline. There's just everyone on the roads, including animals racing. Also, she uses very cliched idiomatic words such as nerves of steel to show, of course, just how scary this race can be. It's not for the faint hearted. And she then uses a declarative sentence. There were two races, the motorized spectators at the back in front of the two donkeys still running close and amazingly not put off by the uproar just behind them. This really builds a 
detailed picture in our minds as the readers of how really crowded this place was, how much activity there was. But equally, this is really, really intriguing and very exciting, especially if this is something that one is not used to seeing every day. Furthermore, there's a mention of the oncoming traffic. And again, so essentially the donkeys are racing towards the oncoming traffic. There's going to be a head on collision. And this is really dangerous and shocking for us. And of course, for some people, they would say that this is maybe violating the donkey's animal rights. Furthermore, there's a lot of alliteration used. Dive, ditch, his hand and horn. Highlighting and really adding to the chaos of this scene. And this is in contrast, however, to the simple sentence, Yacoub loved it. What this shows is one of the drivers, and of course the main driver, Yacoub, he loves this adrenaline. He really loves just how crazy everything is and everything that's happening around him. Furthermore, we learn that Yacoub's language grows more colorful, and this is a euphemism. Essentially, it's saying that as he's driving and, of course, trying to dodge different cars, he's swearing more and more and more. And again, this is Levine's way of just adding a touch of humor to her writing. Furthermore, it's really ironic that this really dangerous sport ends at the hospital gate. So, of course, there's this humor and this touch of irony added that this really dangerous sport, of course, it would be very apt for it to end at the hospital if anybody got injured, at least they're quite close to the hospital to get healed. And the simple sentence, the race was over, really emphasizes again the sudden nature of how everything all boils up and starts really quickly and then suddenly dies down out of nowhere. And of course, this is probably what adds to the excitement of this type of race. And then the trouble began. I assumed the winner was the one who completed the race, but it was not seen that way by everyone. Apart from the two jockeys and officials, who it turned out were actually monitoring the race, there were over a hundred punters who had all staked money on the race and therefore had strong opinions. Some were claiming that the donkey had fallen because the other one had been ridden too close to him. Voices were raised, fists were out and tempers were rising. Everyone gathered around one jockey and official while the bookmakers were trying to insist that the race should be rerun. Yacoub and Iqbal were nervous of hanging around a volatile situation. They agreed to find out for me what was happening, ordering me to stay inside the car as they were swallowed up by the crowd. They emerged some time later. It's still not resolved, said Iqbal. But it's starting to get nasty. I think we should leave. As we drove away, Yacoub reflected on his driving skills. I really enjoyed that, he said, as we drove off at a more sedate pace. But I don't even have my license yet because I'm underage. They both found this hilarious, but I was glad he hadn't told me before. An inexperienced underage driver causing a massive pileup in the middle of the high stakes donkey race could have caused problems. So, of course, how she ends this passage is really, really funny, very humorous and really, really interesting. So our interest as readers is really held throughout this passage. So the simple sentence and then the trouble began. This, of course, changes the tone and there's a sudden increase in tension. It goes from being this crazy race where it's really entertaining. Suddenly people are starting to argue. Furthermore, she uses inverted commas to refer to the officials. And of course, there's a mocking undertone because she's discrediting these people who, of course, are the ones who are also are creating this argument and this disagreement. Also here, the parenthesis shows that this race was really high stakes. These so-called officials, as well as lots and lots of other people, were really monitoring this race. It wasn't simply for fun, as she had initially assumed. Actually, there was also a lot of money riding on it. Also, she talks about over 100 punters who had staked money and there's a lot of gambling Lexus. Lexus is just a fancy way of saying words. So, for example, you've got punters, you've got money. But even in line 49, bookmakers, all of this is just gambling language. And it shows many people in this region make profits based on this sport and, of course, which donkey wins. Then the tricolon, voices were raised, fists were out and tempers were rising, shows how emotions are running high because people, of course, want to win some money. Now here we learn about the names of both drivers. Of course, she makes constant reference to Yacoub. However, we don't know the name of the other lad that was with her. And so the proper nouns Yacoub and Iqbal now make reference to the two people that were accompanying Levine throughout this journey. Furthermore, the adjective volatile really emphasizes how suddenly it's shifted from being this quiet place to a 
crazy place with lots and lots of sports and donkeys running and now it's again shifted to being a really dangerous situation people are about to fight and this shows just how things can really rapidly change in the region that she's in Furthermore, she talks, she refers to the collective noun crowd to talk about how Yakub and Iqbal disappear into this group of people who are arguing. And again, this shows that she's in a kind of scary position as she's waiting in the boot. Also, she, she uses a stative verb to talk about how Yakub is reflecting on his driving skills. He feels really proud of it. And we think, oh, wow, this is great because he's a driver. But then we then realize this exclamatory sentence tells us that Actually, he doesn't even have a license, let alone being a driver, which is quite hilarious. Of course, this is a very dangerous position for him to be in, but it's meant to kind of add to even more the colourful environment and just how different this place is from what Levine is used to. She then uses the premodifiers to emphasise just how dangerous Yakub was being because he's inexperienced and underage. So these pre-modifiers, again, it does in many ways also emphasize how vastly different life in Karachi is. Perhaps maybe there aren't as stringent uh, rules relating to maybe driving. Of course, there probably are rules that he's breaking, but he's able to do so in a way that maybe he might not be able to get away with in different countries. However, what this does, she doesn't necessarily make it too heavy. She still makes light of it. And what she's doing is really adding like a very playful tone and she ends with the euphemism this could have caused problems and of course you've also got the alliteration of could and caused this euphemism ends on a touch of humor which shows of course if he didn't know what he was doing even in spite of being experienced and underage of course this could have caused problems because it could have caused a car crash however he was very skilled so of course this isn't the first time that your coupe maybe has been driving and Levine just seems to have found this experience really interesting and entertaining. And of course, we as readers find this entertaining. And the constant humor that's really underlying the tone of this article makes this article really, really intriguing for us as readers. So that's all. If you found this video useful, do make sure you visit our website, which is www.firstreetutors.com. There you will find lots of useful revision materials. If you're studying this and indeed any other extract in the Edexcel Pearson anthology. Thank you so much for listening.